Well, Donald Trump's uh, gone to vote and he's talking. He's still bloody talking. Have a listen. I'm very proud of her. She's got the number one bestseller. Can you believe that? He can believe it. But uh, so we're very proud of the job she's done with that. Her book is number one. But uh, we're going to go over to the office in West Palm and we're going to say hello to the workers. They've worked very hard. I think so. I mean, I hear we're doing very well there. In Georgia, I hear we're doing very well. I, I think I hear we're doing very well oh, everywhere. <laughs> now, I may be, I may regret that statement, but uh, I'm hearing that we're doing very well. <laughs> Would you go louder? No, I haven't prepared a speech. No, I, I did speeches last night. For, all day long, I have to tell you something, and, 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 I'm, and I'm watching this and listening. God, he looks knackered. But we'll find out, and don't forget that election night special overnight. Mike Graham from 1 a.m., Ian Collins from 4. As Donald Trump votes in Florida, we go live to Greg Svensson, chair of Republicans overseas. Greg, good afternoon, my friend. How are you? Great to see you, Jeremy. Uh, so it is six hours back in West Palm Beach, Florida, Donald Trump casting his vote. Um, you and I know each other very well. I know that you will be straight with me because I hear... People on, in this building are saying it's a shoe in People are hiding the fact that they're Trump voters. Other people will say, my God, he's down in Iowa. Kamala Harris, the abortion issue. Just putting aside party loyalty, what's the reality, Greg, for the people listening to talk right now? Are they going to wake up in the morning to Donald Trump or Kamala Harris? I think it will be Trump. And I say that, you know, without 100% confidence, obviously. You know, the, the polling odds have him, you know, in the mid-50s. The polls have it, you know, dead heat, right? I mean, uh, you, you look at half of them, they say it, you know, Kamala's got four swing states. The other half say Trump has four, four swing states. So this is too close to call, Jeremy. It's impossible. And so I, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't bet any money on, on either one. And as a Republican, um, I was yeah. talking to um, a gentleman, Pablo Ohana, who's a, a gentleman working on the d Democratic side and has been for 12 years, and he was ripping into Trump and saying he's lost the shine and blah, blah, blah. And I was talking to him about 8 million migrants flooding America uh, in yeah. the last four years. I was talking about the economy, and I was talking about the fact that whatever you say about Donald Trump, he was talking about, you know, he, he cozies up to Putin. I said, I think it's an ego thing. You weren't at war. Um, do you go with the theory that there's a lot of people who would vote for Trump but wouldn't admit it? Or do you go for the fact that this man, is this live wire, doesn't stick to policy? And are you a frustrated Republican that he hasn't spent less time talking about migrants eating dead animals, but more right. time talking about things that actually will resonate with those voters? Yeah, I mean, sometimes he has a funny way of bringing up issues and he's a bit clumsy with it. The issues that he's bringing up are are relevant, you know, and I think the point he should have made about dropping 20,000 illegal migrants into Springfield, Ohio, was that it was a real burden on the people there and on the government services there. So, you know, I do think he makes mistakes sometimes getting, you know, getting <laughs> misdirected and talking about dogs or whatever. But, but look, I think, you know, you hear from your friend, the Democrat that you had on, it, it's just talking points. I, I, I really appreciate my Democrat friends especially ones in the media that I do, you know, the lecture circuit with and, and the media with, you know, that are just honest, right? Just be honest and, and admit the shortcomings of your candidate and talk about, you know, what you think might work for your candidate. But, you know, to say that the Trump economy came from, I mean, it's just laughable. You know, the Trump economy was good because Barack Obama's economy is so good. And, and immigration, you know, we started working on immigration on day one. No, no, you didn't. You opened the borders and let 10 million illegal migrants in. So, you know, you can argue whether, you know, that's the top issue or not. You can argue whether inflation affects you. But, you know, remember, inflation doesn't affect the celebrities that are endorsing Kamala yeah. right now. It doesn't affect a lot of the pundits that live in, you know, in the bubble. So, you know, I think that, you know, that's just being dishonest when people say things like that. It's, it's unfortunate. Um, are you in England or are you in the States? I'm in London, yeah. I've got a big night tonight. This is the first of many. I was going to uh, say, you, you, you've got a crazy night. You're on with and, Mike Graham, I know, through yeah. the night. And if you think you're getting any kip tomorrow, you won't be because you'll be back on with me tomorrow afternoon. <laughs> it is too close to call, Greg. Um, it is. And, and is, is that... 
I was reading an article this morning, you know, the world holds its breath. Are Americans yeah. excited? I mean, we've heard a lot about, you know, he was just saying, um, you know, my, my people aren't violent. We've talked, I just heard him say it could take up to 20 days for Pennsylvania to yeah. lose when he's moaning about how it happens already. There, there's talk of legal clashes. There's, there's riot yeah. police out in Washington. Do you, do you right. foresee, not maybe just Trump, maybe the other way, do you foresee civil unrest or is that just the I, hyperbole I from the papers? I mean, look, I think it's a bit of hyperbole. I mean, you asked me earlier about the, the quiet Trump voter, and that really was a thing in 2016, and it surprised the pollsters, obviously. Um, it really was a thing in 2020 as well. You know, people were, some people had some Trump fatigue from, you know, sort of the volatility in his administration. And this time is different. People are a lot more positive. Kids are wearing MAGA hats at their school. That never would have happened in 2020. Um, you know, and as far as the, the potential violence, I mean, Look, it's been a, we've had a few bad elections. You know, you had the massive protests after Hillary lost and they had, you know, she said it was illegitimate and he didn't win fairly. And you had the Women's March in Washington. You talk about weird and you know, they, they kind of say, you know, J.D. Vance is weird. Take a look at the Women's <laughs> March from 20, 2017, you know, but they were riding in Seattle. They were riding in Chicago. So we had some real violence. Then, of course, you had the summer of 2020 where the leftists were turning over, you know, cities all over America, all blue blue governed cities, by the way, Democrat governed cities. And then of course you had Jan 6. And so I don't think it will be that bad this time. Everything's been sort of, everybody's been proactive, right? The Republicans have been much more proactive with making sure voter rolls are scrolled. I mean, voter, voter rolls are cleaned up. You know, we're much more proactive with poll watchers and lawyers on the ground. So instead of playing catch up, you know, like in 2020 where you know, Trump the, the next day was saying, you know, the voting machines were broken or whatever. That, that was just playing catch-up. Well, well I, just, I just heard him say, I might regret saying we're winning. I saw Nigel yeah. Farage yesterday right. saying, if you lose, go play golf. Do you Absolutely. believe that if, if, if Donald Trump loses, he'll accept it and walk away this time? I do. I, I honestly do. And, and it's, look, if, if it happens, you know, okay, great. We, we look back and figure out the missteps or the mistakes we made. But, I, you know, look, there's a good chance he wins. I mean, it, granted, it's 50-50. I mean, the, the, most of the polls betting odds have it slightly Trump. It's called, they call it toss-up Trump. Nice. So it, it really means anything can happen. And, you know, t Hillary was up three and a half points, four points in, in 16, and Trump won. Biden was up seven points. Trump outperformed the polls. And so really it's a question of were the pollsters able to fix the you know, the, the problems with their models and correct those to, per, to, to better reflect um, Trump voters. But it's hard to do that if there are quiet Trump voters. So I, I wouldn't completely rule out that, that theory or that formula for Trump once again outperforming the, the polls. And maybe this isn't as close as we think.